Good afternoon, everybody. Jim Fleeler, Vice President of Sales for Charlotte Products. Welcome to today's webinar session. Today's topic is winter facility preparation and really lowering the risk of an in infection, how it uh, relates to your buildings. And it is Wednesday, October 13th of 2021. So uh, thanks for attending. We do we continue to do these once a month uh, for sure uh, with special requests really from customers like yourselves there that really find them uh, helpful. Uh, uh, today, uh, myself, I've just talked about there, Ask with Williams uh, as our Chief Operating Officer. He'll be joining us for the Q&A session at the end. And, um, you know, and he's a, a welcomed addition there on the compliance side and innovation and uh, technical aspects of each uh, and the chemistry behind the products there as well. So, so really, let's get right, right into it here without uh, any more delay. Today's discussion points are really cleaning tips to lower the risk of an outbreak during winter. Okay, there are uh, a certain uh, certain cleaning tips that you need uh, to address uh, during winter, uh, and there are differences between uh, between that and um, and spring and fall and summer and things like that. And we'll talk about those. We want to explore the increased effect of and risk of enclosed facilities because there are certain risks there that are a higher level than when all of the windows and doors are open in facilities. We're going to talk about some educational tips that ensure safe, healthy spaces, and improving occupant and visitor wellness, right? And that's really our key, particularly, I guess it's fair to say, post-corona uh, and, and COVID virus or COVID-19 virus right now. Uh, really not sure what stage we are across the globe there, but we've got to continue to monitor uh, that for sure. Uh, and again, as always, we'll have a question and answer session with Asquith. And a reminder that the next webinar is on Wednesday, November the 17th. Um, which is uh, just about a month from today. Okay, so getting into it, winter 2021 is fast approaching. You're seeing the days are getting shorter. There's less daylight. We've got patchy frost in certain parts of the globe uh, uh, that are starting to appear and you've got colder temperatures. You're getting down into single digits at night and things like that. And, you know, so you can tell the trees are changing. You know, the gardens are changing, the vegetables, the farmers, the production, everything is there. So obviously, all telltale signs that it is fast approaching. We're, we've got Halloween and pumpkin spices made its debut again here and Christmas are all common conversations. You've got the retail world and online sales focused on this particular season and consumer spend and believe me uh, the retail outlets have changed this year. You know in years past I mean when Halloween would start to come in in a little bit and then and then the day Halloween was done generally Christmas would come out okay uh, but but now there's a really a mix. I mean, there's 50% Halloween and there's 50% Christmas in stores now. And they're really, one recommendation is, look, there are raw material and there are product shortages out there in the world. And if you wanted a little bit of Christmas shopping advice from myself, I mean, I would start your Christmas shopping earlier and make sure you get the choice of what you're looking for and set it aside because the chances, the demand of that coming up in, you know, in uh, later October, November and December, uh, it's going to be more difficult because there are major shortages without question. You know, they're starting to advertise snow blowers and shovels and coats and rock salt and boots. And, and, and all of those things there to help prepare us for winter. So all obviously signs that it's fast approaching. Snow tires on your vehicle, in appropriate parts of the world, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's all here, right? So we have to start thinking about that, okay? So typically for winter, what we, what we, should, what we always do is we always prepare for the common cold whether it's influenza, the cold, the flu, whatever it may be. And this year should be no different as because they haven't disappeared, these symptoms and these viruses and things. They've maybe taken a back seat to COVID-19. They're not in the news, but believe me, they are still there. Do we recommend a flu shot for people this season? Yes, we do. Follow your medical advice as always, without question. And I know I've got a text the other day from my pharmaceutical, com pharmaceutical company that basically put me on a, a list to make me aware when it came in. And will I get the annual flu shot? Yes, I will, without question. You know, so those things are coming up, but don't automatically, people haven't been ill with the flu or a cold as much as before, but you know what? It hasn't gone away. We're washing our hands more. 
we're social distancing, we're using hand sanitizer, we're doing all of these particular things which are actually proving to keep us safer. You know, facilities typically stock facial tissue, cleaner, shovel, salt, matting, mops and buckets, right? It doesn't go much farther than that typically, you know, and then we wait for spring and the warmer weather and away we go. But this year is different, you know, because COVID-19 remains a serious global threat in addition to the other viruses and, and pathogens. So no longer, if you're following history and you're stocking a few of those basic necessities, it's time to consider other uh, necessities on top of that, like a disinfectant, for instance, a food service sanitizer, for instance, you know, and things. And we'll talk about that in today's session to help prepare you a little bit more. You know, here's some facts. This COVID-19 pandemic, it's placed a lot of stress on every single one of us, right? The flu and the common cold add another element of risk, and that's right around the corner and very timely at this particular time of year. You know, facilities, they're breeding grounds for all types of disease-causing pathogens. You know, there's contamination of a single commonly touched area can impact 40 to 60% of other surfaces throughout a building in just a few hours. So that means one person coming into a building touches a common area and that can the impact of that can be you can contaminate and spread you know these issues through 40 to 60% of it through other surfaces in a building. Okay, in a relatively short period of time. So that's, you know, the, the takeaway there, make sure we're cleaning those commonly touched areas, those high touch areas and things like that. Cleaning and cleaning and either disinfecting or cleaning and then either food service sanitizing is really our words of wisdom there. And if allowed, those illnesses spread, it, you know, dramatically increasing the burden of our healthcare systems, costing us absolute millions in care and loss earnings including absenteeism so these are some simple facts of typical winter facilities okay airtight and enclosed facilities soon as the cold weather hits we close our windows the doors are no longer propped open warehouse doors are no longer propped open the heat system is on so you're obviously not exchanging air uh, you know and, and drafts are sealed this is when we go and we actually apply poly over windows we seal doors we do all kinds of things and basically our buildings become airtight you know what are the issues there you've got you know, you, you close them because of the cold air, but you've got dry air and those buildings really, they, they don't breathe as well in the winter months, okay? You've got trapped and contaminated air inside for all of us to breathe, causing potential illnesses. And respiratory ailments didn't go away because of COVID was here. And in fact, it's been enhanced, right? You've got to consider all of the elements if interior wellness for the duration of the winter months. You can't just say, well, we should be okay. You've got to look at all of the elements of HVAC and things like that for the whole duration of the winter months, okay? There's certain types of viruses and bacteria that thrive in cooler, dry conditions and absolutely thrive, I may add, okay? Proper air filtration is critical and proven healthier by all of the experts, right? And the existing HVAC systems of all types, they need serviced, right? They need their filters cleaned. They need the ducts cleaned. They need, you know, replaced, whatever it may be. I mean, the servicing of all of these components are now more important than, than ever. Right? And then also you've got to look at the consideration of new higher efficiency uh, type systems. They've got to explore those considerations, including your residence furnace. I mean, quite honestly, when is the last time you changed the filter on your actual furnace? Do you get a fall tune-up before you expect it to perform day in and day out without doubt, right? You know, are you changing the filters? Are you making sure that vents are not blocked and things like that? These are all considerations not only for our environment, but really for your health and wellness of you, your family, and your, and your workers at work and whether it's at home. You know, so remember those airtight facilities without question okay so let's talk about you know enclosed facilities right not only is the air an issue but surface contamination is as well aggressive chemistry and residual on surfaces are all challenges right 
You've got an employee and occupant wellness is very critical, right? COVID-19 has assisted us with improving sanitation levels, but we cannot lower our guard. We cannot afford to lower our guard, you know, without doubt there, right? And we need that continuous improvement in education and training needed to remain in the forefront, you know? So really, there's a lot of elements involved here, and these are ones that basically we should be in the decision-making process of, of our cleaning and sanitation uh, process okay so here's some questions if you're a decision maker these are things that I would ask myself moving forward okay you know and really if you continue to do what you did yesterday or years before chances are you're not going to be near as efficient as you you is expected these particular days okay you know so so typical questions such as which cleaning and disinfectant process and procedure best suits my facility we have all different types of facilities. You know, there's there's different uh, risks involved. There's healthcare, there's the public, there's the public sector and things like that, retail, everything else, right? You know, do you have the right cleaning and sanitizing process? Do you know what procedures best need, need, meet your needs, right? How can I train and educate my employees to increase increase their protection? There is, training is sometimes difficult to do, but there, if there's a return on investment for the actual person, Person, uh, and, it, and it curtails really it, it includes their protection increasing it you'll get a better buy-in okay should I develop an SOP process including validation and measuring okay do you have standard operating procedures involved and guidelines and things that include this validation and measurement okay if you don't you should really visit it what elements or tips can I implement for improvement so you should always look be looking for something better and is my current provider offering my facility solid value? That's a question there that really surround yourself with the best partners, the best distribution partners, the best education partners that you can absolutely get that have real results and solutions for your real solution, your real facility because every single one of them are different. Some core values at, at uh, Charlotte and I mean really this is the foundation of our, our, our uh, existence is really what it is. You know, we, we are very good at, on, at listening. Okay, we understand the insights that are going on in the industry. We keep our ear to the ground and keep asking questions about how could we make your job easier? How could we make it safer? What's new? What's innovative? All of these things, right? Then we have a team, a core team of valuable team members that really uh, are able to come up with those innovative products and programs that the customers are telling us they need. And then one thing we're particularly good at, and this is the biggest challenge, as a matter of fact, is, is really transferring that knowledge to people of all sites, all types, all skill levels and things, and we live and breathe that following also the three pillars of sustainability. So let's figure out what we need to do, how to do it, and then transfer that knowledge to the customer. And that we will never ever stop uh, following as a matter of fact. As far as some education, I mean, education is key. We have uh, unbelievable amount of educational materials on our website, charlotteproducts.com. Okay, you can see a little collage on the right hand side of everything. I mean, all of our webinars are on there, all of our blogs, all of our articles and things. And then here's one we've just designed actually just today, as a matter of fact, is winter floor care and equipment tips of the trade. You know, that document, if you are anybody in a building that's in any kind of management or supervisory, uh, custodial, uh, you know, responsibility. There's 35, and we'll grow this list, by the way, but there's 35 tips on there, which number one will prolong the life of your equipment. It'll prolong the life of your, your uh, matting programs. It'll lower the risk of and chance of, uh, of um, pathogens and viruses spreading throughout your building and cross-contamination. It will actually t make sure that you prolong the life of your floor care program instead of deep stripping and scrubbing and recoding. It'll actually help you treat your mops and buckets and equipment better. Uh, you extend the life of uh, floor pads and I mean there's a whole array of information here and it isn't just chemical oriented because that's what we manufacture. It's really all the different cleaning processes that are involved that really help you and that makes us a full scale educational partner that you can rely on to help you. We have our 
SOP programs, we have post-corona protection plans, we have return to work protection plans, we have all kinds of products that go along and dispensing control systems and things like that and training wall charts and these most of these come in three languages and that's English, French and Spanish as a matter of fact. So, so Go to charlotteproducts.com. I know we always talk about it, but we continuously add there. Okay. One thing speaking along the lines of education, the ISSA uh, is fast approaching in, uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, we will not be in Las Vegas as a face-to-face -face trade show. Um, we really care about our employees and, uh, and, uh, and really keeping them as safe as possible. But what we did a year ago is we signed up for a virtual experience there. It's not a virtual uh, trade show booth. What it is, it's a virtual webinar, really, which is on uh, Tuesday, October the 19th. It's an hour long. It's in the safest, it's the safest for every single one of us here. And it's really about precision cleaning and what, where, why, and how to clean. Okay. And it'll teach you how to mitigate the, mitigate the spread, uh, mitigate, sorry, uh, the spread of infection by identifying the risk um, to obtain a precise understanding and demonstration of what, where, why, and how to clean. You know, so if you're anybody, and this isn't for a high level or low level, it's for everybody all across on really where are the risks, what should I be using, how should I use that product, and uh, and how often, and things like that. So it's a great webinar. It is absolutely free for you. And again, it's Tuesday, October the 19th at 1.30, and that is uh, Pacific time, or sorry, Central time, st Central Standard time, and away you go. So, so uh, we hope to be back at the ISSA in 2022, but this year we just said as a management group, let's protect the health and wellness of our workers and also um, our, our customers as well. Okay, so, so really the tips of the trade here. I've talked about that document. It just came out a couple of slides ago there. I was going to spend some time and review a little bit of them, but you, you're uh, more than welcome to go on the website and there are 35 of them there. And I think it's that time there where we uh, we bring in Asquith and uh, and we do our question and answer period. And Asquith's been away for a couple of months there, as a matter of fact, and he's now ba back uh, here with us. I think he's finished his holidays or <laughs> maybe he's Christmas shopping or something. Um, but uh, but let's, let's get Asquith within the room here and we'll go over some questions and I think we've got uh, quite a few of them that we've got to get to. So so anyway, with that uh, being said, we'll jump to that now. Make sure you stay safe and we'll see you on November 17th and we'll talk to you in a few minutes here. Thank you. Good morning, Asperth. Welcome back. Well, good morning to you too, Jerry. Where have you been? Actually, I was on sabbatical. Sabbatical? <laughs> I heard rumor that you were Christmas shopping. <laughs> well, fact. you know, with the supply chain <laughs> yeah. problem, uh, Jimmy, I think uh, it's a good idea. Yeah. I think we should tell our customers the same thing. We've got a supply chain problem. Yeah, we will. I mm -hmm. think uh, I think there's probably going to be several questions and inquiries about that uh, is really what mm -hmm. there's going to be. But, I mean, it's uh, Wednesday, October 13th already. Thanksgiving, everything good? Everything good? How about you? You had a good time doing? Yeah, you know, we uh, we actually barbecued for the very first time our turkey on the barbecue. How did you do that? Right? Well, the master chef, me, which really doesn't know what he's doing, <laughs> did a fine job. In fact, it was easier than in the oven, if you ask me. Really? And the taste was just, ooh. Wow. Really nice. Few spices, a little bit of butter, basting every fifteen to twenty minutes, and uh, a couple of beverages uh, as well throughout. And uh, and it turned out really well. Beverages for the turkey, or beverages well, for, for both, you? both, for both actually, both as a matter of fact. So, but anyway, welcome back. Uh, well, we missed you. We've had a few, um, you know, people step in in your absence and things, and everybody's still crying out for ask with saying, "Where is he? Where did he go?" And I keep saying, "He's coming back." So, oh. welcome back. And you're looking well. Well, as a matter of fact, yeah, new, well, thank you. new haircut, things like that, which is great. Jen, have we got any questions from the crowd today? We do. Excellent. Thank you very much. She, she never wants to come in front of the uh, in front of the camera, except she did one time, tried she to did. take your seat. And, yeah, that's, that's for sure. She did a great job. Yeah, but you know, we've had a lot of questions in the past while, um, you know, winter is approaching. I mean, you know, if you look now, it's... Uh, 
you know, it's getting, uh, the days are shorter, you're getting that dew in the morning. Don't remind me, Jimmy. Yeah, the leaves are all falling, you're getting even warnings of patchy frost now. Yes. Now, we are in a little bit of a of a warm-up right now, but it's not going to last. I think next year, next week is going to be mm -hmm. single-digit lows at night and things like that. Yeah. So it is changing, and we've had a lot of people, you know, we have our facilities and our customers have year-round challenges. Mm -hmm. um, you know, summertime and, and spring and fall are, are more dust and debris, mm -hmm. you know, heat and mm -hmm. humidity mm -hmm. and things like that. But then in the winter, you've got the extreme cold, you've got the winds, you've got mm -hmm. the snow, the ice, mm -hmm. the slip and fall and mm -hmm. things. And this year really is, um, is, is COVID, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, you take uh, a lot of people think, well, what's the common cold gone now? Is influenza, the flu, mm -hmm. are they gone? Have mm -hmm. they taken a backseat mm -hmm. to COVID? But obviously we know better. I mean, mm -hmm. what you've got now is all of the traditional health risks and challenges. And on top, you've got COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So any comments surrounding that? Well, of course, uh, you know, we've seen over the last little while, um, a decrease in the common flu, you know, the cold, cold and, and, and flu. And that's the reason, uh, the reason for that is obviously um, because of all the, the uh, precautionary measures that we've been doing, you know, frequent hand washing, sanitizing when you don't have water, wearing a mask, social distancing, all those factors, you know, also uh, prevent colds and flus, but the virus is still there. So I would advise people, you know, to not forget getting a flu vaccine mm -hmm. because it still exists so uh, and also to um, making sure that all the other precautionary measures that we do continue until we suppress um, the COVID-19 uh, um, virus as well so these are all things that we, we should be doing yeah for sure and I know the other day actually it was um, I don't know it was midnight and my app went mm -hmm. uh, a text I got a, a mm -hmm. text from the local pharmacy mm -hmm. reminding me to actually sign up for my flu vaccine yes. awareness so they're gonna yes. let me know when it becomes mm -hmm. available and away we go so that's terrific yeah. uh, I mean for them to do that and we've always had our flu vaccine and we'll continue to do that yeah. as well so away we go so that's good mm -hmm. well that's uh, that's terrific uh, you know there's lots of rumblings now this time of year about um, shortages again asked with raw materials cork and all those things what's your take on that well uh, this is real because you know uh, let's start from the beginning and um, you know we had a shutdown mm -hmm. and then we are now ramping up but the factories that supply us you know it's a slow intake you know you've got social distancing in factories so if you had 100 employees you may only have 50 you know, um, and it takes time to get back up to the sort of supply that requires, or that we required a year ago, or in 2019. And then you have that, you've got supply chain in terms of energy costs, mm -hmm. you know, you know that. You know, you're looking at a uh, shortage of natural gas and, and fuel. Look at gasoline. Gasoline is, mm -hmm. is, is very high, right? I bought gasoline today at $1.40 a litre, mm -hmm. Canadian. So you can see where things are going. Um, so the supply chain is is very, very long. You've got container ships. A lot of our supplies come from overseas, mm -hmm. or if not the whole thing, but components of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so all those things are very, very important. Um, and, uh, you know, getting truck drivers, I mean, you, we've got, we have a shortage of truck drivers. You know, we have a shortage of uh, cargate. Lead time for cargate, you'd be looking at three months lead time wow. for cargate, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. So raw materials, cargate, um, you know, uh, bottles and resins and pumps and all those things that we require to do our job. And so I would advise people to place orders early along with, you know, doing the Christmas shopping to what you said. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, yeah. Uh, yeah. so it is bad. It, it is there bad. is worry yes. out there, there right? Is, really what there is worry. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just glancing, actually, uh, Sharon here says, uh, or no, sorry, it's not Sharon, I'm reading it wrong. Um, okay, do you, uh, here's uh, um, Emma here, actually. Jeez, I was mm -hmm. bouncing all around. I, I knew I sort of glanced over the question. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate another shortage in our industry this fall or winter? And if so, what do you recommend us bringing in as extra stock to hold us over? Well, so well, ties right into Emma's question. Yeah, it will tie in nicely. Uh, I would say, um, you know, disinfectants. 
you know, critical. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know things of uh, just general cleaning, uh, disinfectants, hand sanitizers, those kinds of things. I think you need to have a, a good run on those things early. Yeah. Because, you know, the winter is long, mm -hmm. <laughs> between six months, and uh, we got to really keep that in mind. Yeah, and there's an extended shelf life on these things, of course. so there's no yes. risk. There's yeah, no risk. I mean, you've got two or three years on yes. average. I know yes. ours are typically yes. Yes. between one, two, and three years, depending yes. on what it is. Yes. But, I mean, you know, food service sanitizers, I mean, restaurants mm -hmm. going back in and mm -hmm. those things, I mean, you know, the public is really looking mm -hmm. for that that um, insurance yes. that you are do have the right product. And that's not going to change. Yeah. You know, uh, we demand, as as public, as a public, we demand uh, hand sanitizers. If you go to a restaurant, I want to have a hand sanitizer right on the table where I am sitting. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to be going to the bathroom to, to uh, hand sanitize. And so every table must have one. And uh, I think it's indicative um, that uh, that we do this mm -hmm. absolutely, mm -hmm. and then you know, and, and the one question here from Sharon is about any ideas on new innovative products and things. I'll come back to that, but mm -hmm. something tells me that just around the corner is maybe something to do with a high-speed alcohol hand sanitizer production. Is that yes? Can we leak that out a little bit, or just uh, that little teaser, or do we want to say that? Well, I mean, we've already said it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you and your team keeping those little secrets. Well, we have to. Right? Sir. We yeah. have to. We yeah. have to. Um, come in shortly. Yes, we'll have, uh, and we can probably do. Um, how about we keep it this way? Once uh, we're up and ready for production, mm -hmm. we can do a webinar. Oh, on that, absolutely. And show, uh, you know, as long as it is in done. March, because the last time we did one, it was very. No, no, no. We'll, we'll do this. Uh, We'll do this in November. Sometime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's in November. Or December. Or, January, or December. Or something. Sometime. But yeah. it's indoors. So yeah. Well, it's you're probably facing challenges and shortages there, would you? Of production mm -hmm. facility, like materials, and yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 That's so, that's so we you know, we have to right now um, do a lot of sourcing, and we have been sourcing a lot of raw materials and packaging components several months in advance. Yeah. Uh, well, let me go back. Let, let me ask you this question. We're not going to go back to where we were. A year or so, I mean, I, I felt like a stock market broker, you know, with disinfecting and allocating to all of our customers mm -hmm. and things. Do you anticipate it that serious or is it too soon to tell? Well, it's too soon to tell. Okay. We don't know for sure. Yeah. As I said, we are, you know, the entire economy is ramping up and just the, the supply chain is long because mm -hmm. things have to ramp up. Yeah. And we, you know, for us to get back up to where we were, not just us, but the entire industry, um, it's going to take some sometimes yeah you know what I can't believe is you drive down the road at the automobile dealers and there's no inventory exactly there's no car exactly I mean there was a dealer a brand name dealer in town here the other day I drove by and they had six cars on the parking lot another one had eight cars and they and they made it look better but they were that you 90 percent of them were used there was social you distancing know, they, they were social distancing <laughs> there's no question there one decided to pave their whole entire parking lot their inventory is so yes. so low so yeah. and I know I've got a a special uh, vehicle ordered and um, and and they gave me an update last week and said it honestly still could be three or four more years right yes uh, three or four more years yeah exactly. and, and and what, I, what was the uh, the 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 purpose of this why 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 three or four years what, what's well, it's just shortages they're shortages yeah they just they can't build uh, they can't get the parts to build the car and it mm -hmm. is a brand new mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it's a Corvette Z06 mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. what it mm -hmm. is um, and they cannot, uh, they can't Semic get the Semiconductors is a major, major problem too. It goes on and on and on. It goes on. I mean, so, so three or four years down the road, I mean, that's a long time to wait, but I yeah. guess it's the industry that we're in, you know, it's it really what it is here. So I guess we better get to some, some questions here. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, would Charlotte, this is Lori, and she's saying, would Charlotte be able to teach us how to use an ATP meter either in our facility or in a virtual training session? Of course the answer is yes. And yes. we do have, uh, webinars where we've done this, we've done um, training across the board, we've got literature and so yes, the answer is yes and <laughs> if you want to, you could uh, go on the website uh, and, and pull that information down. Yeah, and I know we did a webinar on mm -hmm. uh, on how to we measure did. and how we to did. test and how to, to actually mm -hmm. do them in the whole day. and you know we talked about the rating scale mm -hmm. and everything so mm -hmm. so Laurie, uh, I'm not sure what month it would be but uh, 
Uh, it would have been last year for sure. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, just uh, feel free to just go on the Charlotte website and look under webinars and you'll see a whole menu of them all there and just browse through. There's probably about 50 topics, by the way, so you'll probably find something um, that's even as interesting or more interesting than ATP meters and things like that. So, that's so anyway, correct. yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's uh, Charles G. At the school board, we use uh, your Enviro Solutions pump-up sprayer we think they're the best available. The employees are all very happy. Do you still carry them and do you have them in stock? Well, the good news is, yes, we do have them in stock. And yes, I do agree with you that they're the best in the industry. So yes, and yes, and yes. <laughs> so, yes. so Charles is in good shape. He's I, in good shape. I do believe we have about 3,700 of them right now. That's, that's right? true. Now we've sold there thousands is. and thousands yes. and thousands. And, and Charles, I, I think if you just take a, a point from what Asquith said about possible shortages, mm -hmm. Uh, once those 3,700 are gone, they're gone. We can supply you today, but I mean, uh, there's we've, no guarantee we've got, really we've, of... We've got an order in, but again, yeah. there's this long lead time, so yeah. I don't know when we're going to get there. Yeah. So if you are proactive, I'll say order them now. Yeah, and that's a that's a great sprayer. I love it's that sprayer. Spray. I, I know mean, that it's one of your favorites. It's my favorites. Yeah, we use it with our ES15. Mm -hmm. It's simple. It mm -hmm. sprays. It doesn't take a lot of effort to pump it that's up. Right. I mean, yeah. it's fairly reliable as mm -hmm. far as I go. Adjustable tip and everything, and it's uh, it just works great. You know, mm -hmm. I do. I don't want to use a trigger sprayer anymore myself. You know, I know we've done many demos with that pump up. We spray. certainly have. There's no question there. So that's a good thing. Now here, Cheryl, she's taking off for the uh, talking about entrance matting which we talked about on the webinar mm -hmm. as you know um, would it be okay if we placed additional entrance matting in our entrances now instead of waiting for the snow and the ice and the storms is there an advantage and will it assist with lowering dust and debris from entering our building and possibly some pathogens or viruses well you want to leave all the dirt in the parking lot as you always say mm -hmm. and uh, so more matting is in fact a lot better you you know prevent uh, tracking dirt and debris into your facility so yes yes and yes and you know bugs and viruses and so forth are associated with some particles as well and if you keep them outside of course it's better for you yeah, it's safer for everybody inside and I know in the matting industry you should really have between 10 and 15 feet Correct. Uh, and you should have a combination mm -hmm. of scraper scraper wiper and then a wiper That's know, right. which Absolutely. keeps that out there viruses and and uh, matter are, are are airborne and gravity brings yes. them down if you yes. have a mat there it'll trap them obviously right. and then yes. dry your feet and not it causes you know, hopefully prevent a slip and fall and tracking mm -hmm. through the building too. So it's a good question from Cheryl no, there. Sure. You can never have enough entrance matting. The, you know, more, the and, more the better. Yeah, and the industry standards out there are really, uh, I mean, five feet. So that means a left foot touches them once, the right foot once, and yes. the heel of another. And what do you actually expect that to do? You know, so mm -hmm. it is inexpensive. And I know some of our distributors uh, buy, buy like cell matting and they even lease matting because it can be. A, a big capital, you know, investment at the same time there. Yes, it is. Um, I said, Charlotte, we have the uh, great products to actually clean them and keep them looking new for sure. And uh, and even to take the white residue out from the winter, which we'll talk about here because I'm just glancing at questions as okay. you're speaking and uh, there's a couple here. Here's Fred, what product do you recommend for when using an auto scrubber on my floors to eliminate that white nasty winter film? Do you have any suggestions to make mm -hmm. it work better in really harsh conditions. Well, we've got a fantastic product right here, Jimmy. Oh, 83. Mm -hmm. That's right, 83. And that product is fantastic for this. You have uh, the, uh, the active ingredient that uh, sequesters uh, the calcium uh, and take it away, that white film that you see on the floor. And um, that would do a very, very good job. Mm -hmm. Haze away. Haze away. Yeah, I, I like haze away. It's uh, you know UL Eco logo certified for mm -hmm. sure. I know it's got a fairly nice smell. Now, if I've got uh, if I've got right, Fred's now has got severe issues here. Um, you know, typically the you know the at use dilutions would be mm -hmm. fine, mm -hmm. and um, you know for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, but what if you've re your friend here? It sounds like he's got a real. Big, well, is there a, be liberal, be liberal um, with it, and then mm -hmm. give a little dwell time, come back, and and uh, and 
take that up. I think that would help a lot. Yeah. So a little pre-soak type yes, thing for yes. maybe three, four, yes. five minutes yes. and let it really yes. break it up and, yes. then, and then a mop or an auto scrubber yes. and away you go. And Can you, you use it as a, in a carpet extracting machine as well? Absolutely. Yeah. And it'll remove it's all removed. the white film. You got it. Really? Yes. Absolutely. Good. And on my entrance matting? Yes. Same thing? Yes. Good yes. stuff. Yeah. It's a very, it's, good, very good product. Yeah. I would, you know, uh, I mean, is, is it different between, I mean, most people use a neutral cleaner year round. Mm -hmm. Is it different uh, than a neutral cleaner? It is a lot different than a neutral cleaner. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because as I said earlier, you've got a sequestrant in there that actually ties up all the calcium. Yeah. That, that white film that you'll see on your carpets or elsewhere. And so that, that uh, does a good job. Yeah. So would it be, if I was using a neutral cleaner mm -hmm. um, nine months of the year, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to mop, for, do my floors and auto scrub and things, would it be worthwhile switching the neutral cleaner out, like, say, October yes. or November yes. and switching to yes. this uh, yes. and then going back? Yes. Or you could use it all year. If you or want you to. could use it all year. Yeah. 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 It's probably a, a little bit of a price uh it's yes. probably a, a yeah, it's more expensive. Yes. yes, but still, I mean, but, if it. But, but this does the job. Yeah, yeah. I guess if training was a difficult thing in a facility and mm -hmm. you didn't want to switch over, uh, but I know our dilution control systems. I mean, it's aim the hose, push the button, push the away button, you go, so we can set that up yeah. with them. Our yes. distributors yes. are. Okay, well that's so good. That's, that yep. makes it nice and easy. Yeah, so Fred, there's uh, ES eighty three Hayes mm -hmm. away. That's certainly your uh, your go to here. Here's Nathan. Uh, well, it ties into this. Uh, are all winter neutralizer cleaners the same? What makes ours better? Whoa, there's well, Nathan putting you on the spot. Well, I, on the spot. <laughs> well, I can't tell them all the secrets, Nathan, but I can tell you that uh, we've got sequestrants in there. We've got some surfactants in there. And um, we will, uh, if you look at the SDS, it'll give you a good idea, but uh, not all secrets to be known. So, but this is a very, very good product. At the end of the day, this is Ecologa certified, Jim just mentioned that to you, um, and this is a very, very good product, very efficacious, you will be very, very happy using this product. Yeah, and g g you know, the bottom line is it gives you great results, right? You Absolutely. Know, yeah. is there, you know, and any time, you know, yeah, if you do have to pay a little more than a commodity neutral cleaner, mm -hmm. but you can lower the risk of, of a slip and fall if you can mm -hmm. stop that white film from tracking into all your buildings, mm -hmm. uh, ruining your carpets, your, you know, everything else there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think it and would you, be And you know, you always talk about that, uh, that dollar, when we used to have a dollar. Yeah. We used to follow that dollar and... 10% is, yes. is the cost of goods and the 90% is labor. Of labor so, so yeah. why repeat, repeat, repeat yeah. with a neutral flow cleaner yeah. where you can do this once and forget. Well, I, I would think uh, just from labor alone, you should be able to come close to reduce cutting your costs in half oh, by mopping it once with the right product versus yes. multiple times if you have that film. So, yeah. that, so that's yeah. for sure. Here's, uh, here's Tony D. Mm -hmm. uh, where can I get an electronic copy of the SDS for your Hazelwood? Well, Online. Online, you know, you go to uh, charlotteproducts.com, Tony, and it's right there under, uh, you can go under the products, and uh, and then as soon as you go on to Hazeway, you'll see the product information sheet, you'll see it in bilingual language, you'll see it in um, the SDS sheets are there. When there is a video, a short brief on training and things, mm -hmm. it's also there, so so every, you'll find everything there. Everything's uh, there. Yeah. Here's Emma. We've already asked mm -hmm. her. She's already asked you about another shortage. Here's John. Do you recommend a product to clean the metal coils of our HVAC filtration system? Would a foaming trigger sprayer or pump-up sprayer clean better? Oh. Yes, of course, because you want to have 12 times a pump-up sprayer would work good. Um, the products uh, we'd use uh, would be ES75, uh, ES74, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Give proper dwell time and then rinse with potable water. Yeah, I know uh, we have an electronic filter on our, our home mm -hmm. system there. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, it gets sticky. It gets a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of residue on yes. those fins and yes. a lot of dust and mm -hmm. things. And there's really only two of us there. Mm -hmm. So I use 74 and a foam and trigger go. sprayer, and I, and I put it in the laundry tub mm -hmm. and uh, and basically spray, let it yeah. sit, and then I hose it off, and then and then away I go. You got from it. There. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Use the same, so the same method all yeah. and you'll be happy with that. So ES74 for smaller applications, but mm -hmm. ES75, which is our real muscle degreaser. Mm -hmm. um, um, food plan approved, the whole works that you is obviously if you've got rooftop units, you yes. would use that there. But, but you know, um, the uh, this ties in another question. Here's Janina. Should we clean and then disinfect these coils? Our system does recirculation, uh, so will it lower the foul stagnant odor as well? 
Yes, mm -hmm. you can you can certainly disinfect it as well. Yeah, yeah. You use your pump up sprayer. Yeah, you could use a pump up sprayer. Mm -hmm. You know, but that, yeah, I mean, if you didn't get into some of the nooks and crannies, mm -hmm. or you didn't have a lot of time to clean it thoroughly, mm -hmm. that disinfectant may give you a little bit more forgiveness built yes. in there. And then, yes. if there were any organics or moisture or anything, it may it would have a tendency to eliminate that issue there. So, yes. so all good questions around these filters. Mm -hmm. And you know, the same thing too is uh, is let's let's talk about your exhaust fan for your stove and mm -hmm. your oven at home oh, yeah. I mean you know ours are stainless steel grills mm -hmm. I'm assuming they're stainless steel grills mm -hmm. and they, you know everything you're cooking is going up yes. can it, you know do you recommend 74 in that particular application yes. as well I use that as well yeah should yeah, I it's, 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 you know it's uh, you know greasy type acidic soils right and then therefore you use something that's more alkaline yeah to supply yeah. those things and, and take them yeah and i know once it gets sticky it'll get stickier way faster right. the exhaust good news it is going out that's for right. sure that's out right. into the atmosphere i guess there or yes. whatever so okay uh here's bob can i get a copy of these these tips i know we talked actually um uh we did do our brand new mm -hmm. winter uh, mm -hmm. uh floor care and equipment tips of the trade i know this is just coming out uh uh, shortly, as a matter of fact, and I believe there's the holy cow, there's two pages. There's 35 tips. I think they talked about adding a few more here and there as well. But that's just um, here's Bob. But we talked about it on the webinar. But but this is just good information. You know, for people mm -hmm. who really want to know how can they lower the risk of an outbreak, how can they clean better, how can they survive the winter a little easier, how can they prolong the life of their equipment and mm -hmm. things, and that's just good information. Good that, information. You know, you could teach, if you were a custodial supervisor, you could teach, have a staff meeting surrounding it and review it all and things like that. Have some, some fun, put a little challenge in place for an extra coffee at the that's end right. of the week or that's something right. like yeah. that, which would be good. So, Bob, yes, you can. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be on there quite yet, but it, it will be within the next few days for sure. So look for that, and away we go. And then here's our last question, because I'm looking at my timer. You know, when you weren't here, yes. I didn't have to rush. Are we rushing now? We're rushing, because well, you're I'm talking. talking. We're getting close there, but before really? when you weren't here, I could control the other hosts easier. Oh, Thanks, like you seem to want to talk more. <laughs> Only kidding there, it's great. <laughs> but uh, but here, Sharon, can you share any ideas of new innovative product introductions that you may be coming with out oh, this winter? Oh, you're putting me on the spot here. Oh, oh, oh. Well, oh, you know, Sharon is on to you. She is on yeah. to me. <laughs> Well, you can see here, Sharon, uh, we've got a resin remover, which should be coming shortly, as well as an ES-52, it's a grout uh, restore cleaner, and this would be coming shortly as well. The information will be online in the next little while as well. So, yes, there are a few uh, goodies that's coming very, very shortly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, a resin remover for those that... Uh, our yes. production facilities or dispensaries or even yes. for personal use. Personal I mean, use. you've got three, I'm assuming these are your three sizes. That's correct. That you're coming out with That's there, correct. that you've got it. Mm -hmm. Does it work? Exceptionally well. <laughs> really? Yes. Exceptionally well? Exceptionally well. Okay. Yes. Okay. We, we've had a uh, sample of resin um, from sources. And we've done work in the lab, and, and everything works extremely well. Good stuff. I know we've done and, some. And, and, you know, non-flammable. It's, it's not using IPA. Yeah. You know, a lot yeah. of people use IPA right now for yeah. for that uh, um, resin um, that would one would have from uh, marijuana. Yeah, right? and yeah. So and cannabis and things. Kind of, yes. Yeah, something about using... Uh, flammable cleaner to clean mm. and then lighting it <laughs> on you know with a flame source that yes, doesn't yes, uh, sit yes, well uh, yes, with me as a matter of fact that's for sure and then the grout cleaner I know I know we've got it now and I mean and this one works just like mm -hmm. TV I mean we've got some, I mean, some demos yeah to that's that exceptional well. watch the website for that as well Sharon and, and others because we'll be coming out with that but uh, but anyway uh, our next webinar is I believe Wednesday November the 13th or 17th sorry 17th november the 17th mm -hmm. uh, 11 o'clock uh, eastern standard time there 
watch for that uh, and I know in December we may be able to secure the special guest uh, that we had last December where okay. where Mr. and Mrs. Claus found time out of their extremely busy schedule and I think it's important the kids just mm -hmm. love that. In fact the adults love that one. I did as a matter of fact. I know the, you did. You know the whole works there bringing them in it was a, it was a treat uh, you know for sure but mm -hmm. anyway with that being said uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you Asquith for Wonderful. making an appearance with us again and there's no more you're not able to attend now because we're booking it in your calendar but uh, but to everybody out there thank you for the support stay safe stay healthy um, enjoy the American Thanksgiving which is uh, which is a uh, fast approaching it's probably well maybe a month two weeks, away two weeks uh, no, no America no, right. about yes, yes, the yes, 17th yes, or so somewhere. six weeks six weeks actually so. it'll be one right around our uh, next mm -hmm. webinar as a matter of fact mm -hmm. but but anyway thank you uh, stay safe and uh, and until next time Thank you.